Welcome to my desert home. There you go. Click subscribe and hit the notification button and uh, maybe you'll be able to see me and visit me on a regular basis. Thank you. Well, look, I came in here earlier. I washed the roost down with pine saw. I washed all this uh, nesting box, which they don't use for nesting. I washed it all down, took out all the pine shavings. The pine shavings in there were full of poop, okay? They went in there last night. Somebody went in there and laid a big poop right there. I don't know what they're trying to tell me. If they don't want to use that for eggs, I found maybe only two or three eggs in there since they first started laying. I usually been finding them back there. I found one underneath there yesterday that had started out in there and that uh, that did not make me happy. Oh, there you go. Not a lot of lighting in here. Oh, I'll turn on this light too. Okay, I just had that little light on. Anyhow, I had an egg in there. What'd you guys do with it? There it is. That's an egg. I picked that egg up. They had laid one egg earlier. Right there in the dirt. And I picked it up. I turned these fruit boxes over. Filled them up with pine shavings. Well, not filled, but... And now, uh... Now they're just going through there looking for stuff to eat, and I don't know why. <laughs> and they buried that egg. Don't pick that egg! Oh, man. I'm telling you, I'm not happy. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to sift through there for eggs, huh? Anyhow, these fruit boxes, JMB... They were the last fruit boxes my grandfather had bought about a year or so before he died. And we never used them in the fruit business. <laughs> they just sat in the corner in the, in the packing shed for many years until my dad and my Uncle Gene split the ranch. My Uncle Mike just McKnight, he just took money. But Gene and Dad split the ranch and split those between them and and those wound up in the uh in the old packing shed over by the perry ranch which was where i was living in gates canyon for the past 30 so years anyhow i'm here in nevada now with a bunch of chickens and i'm using the fruit boxes for nests they look like they're not even going to nest in there. They're just going to go pick through there looking for bugs. Well, at least I'm going to have to sift through there with my fingers to find that egg later. Oh. And I'm, I'm suspecting it was that big rooster over there who pooped in there. Because I saw him yesterday. He was climbing in those, those boxes. The uh, nesting boxes. And you know, roosters don't lay eggs. Anyhow, that's it. Okay, I'm gonna go the other way. I'm gonna turn left, uh, right here, going east towards the Sonoma Mountain Range. Alrighty. Oh yeah, it gets pretty uh gets pretty dusty here. The dust gets deep makes make me feel like I gotta put it in four-wheel drive. Maybe I should have. Ah, there it goes. It's rolling good now. Well, there's the uh there's the substation. Power company substation. There's that derelict uh, mobile 
home up right there, double wide. Uh, I've been inside and it's pretty messed up. The uh, whew, bumpy here. The uh, calendar on the wall says, uh, I think it says May 2015. For sure on the 2015. Okay, whoo. It looks like I'm coming up on some, uh, some, well, it wasn't what I thought it was. No, this is, uh, this is some metal that blew up siding off of that mobile home. Yeah. Yeah. Whoop. Well. And these are my new neighbors over here. Ooh. They, uh. Ooh. Ooh, pretty dusty right here. The dust is deep. Anyhow, they, uh, they were living back, back towards the mountain on a, on a road back there. And one day, a few months ago, I saw them coming in here with a, pulling that fifth wheeler. And then, then a bunch of other trailers came in in the next few days. Anyhow, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say anything bad about them, although something bad was said to me about them by a FedEx driver. But that's as, as much as I'm gonna say is that uh, maybe the guy's got a bit of a temper, and uh, maybe he's got a kind of a checkered past, just like me. Yeah. Well, anyhow, if he stays away from me, I'll stay away from him. That's all I gotta say. He better not come running out saying I'm driving too fast. Well, I'm barely creeping along because of this thick dust. Okay, well, we're coming up down here on a on a paved road. Yeah. And uh, this road continues on on the other side of the paved road, but it's just a couple little tracks. Looks like hardly anybody uses it. Anyhow, this guy, this guy to the right of me, is the electrician that worked on uh, hooking me up to the power line. You know, with a, the power change. Anyhow, this is all his equipment here, but he's got horses in there now and everything. Yep, that's his truck. That's his work truck. All right. So, here's the road. The paved road, and it continues on. And, uh...
All right. Well, I've already locked the door. I came in here, turned on the light so I can find the eggs. And uh, there's one. Hope you can see that. Because my shadow is going to be in the way. Huh? That's one egg. Over here in the box. Alright, I put this egg earlier. And there's no other eggs. Kind of dark in here. Okay, and here, look, that's two eggs, one, two, oh, can't even see it, there's no light in here, anyhow, that's one, two, <coughs> excuse me, three, four, one, two, three, four, seven eggs again, seven eggs. And none of them, none of them in any of the places where I intended for them to lay eggs. And even these, this new intention here of me putting these fruit boxes, that one egg actually came from over there. Where I got these other eggs. But seven eggs, they're doing all right. Okay. Well. I'm not happy with you guys. You're putting the eggs in uh, in uh, hidden spots. Oh, they're drinking water out of the blue bowl and it's almost empty. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the lights here. Big old rooster. Yeah, he is a. He is a big old rooster. He's not old, of course, he's young. Hey, buddy. Hey. Huh? No. These are not the friendliest of chickens. <laughs> Turning off the lights. So, good night, you guys. Well, <laughs> hey, before we get into this Bible study, take a look at that that uh, clip where I'm picking up the eggs and count the eggs and tell me what what mistake I made. <laughs> you can either uh, either text me if, if you're one of the people that, that I uh, send a link to on text, to friends and family, and that's probably most of the people who are looking at this. But uh, if not, you can put it in the comment section down below on YouTube. Okay, anyhow. I'm going to try to concentrate on just two scriptures because I don't want this to be too long. But those are the end here. But I want to read this stuff that precede it because it, this whole chapter really is very important. You should read the whole chapter. Anyhow, let's just start out at verse 25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Now, that's all important stuff, but I can't really concentrate on that right now for time's sake. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that need it. Now, yeah, very important stuff. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Minister grace with our mouth. Tell people things that are uplifting and not down tearing and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption if, if 
you have asked Jesus to save you and if he has sent the Holy Spirit into your heart that's the seal you are sealed you are his unto the day of redemption so grieve not the Holy Spirit of God you can make Jesus cry uh, that's a crude way of putting it but uh, but anyhow let's get into the next two verses which is what I wanted to concentrate on let all bitterness and wrath anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind one to another tender hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you and also all malice and be kind tender hearted forgiving Excuse me. <clears throat> Very smoky around here. I'm getting tired of looking at the gray skies and the gray horizons and everything. Anyhow, that's why the uh, those road videos I just I'm gonna put on this one is uh, you can't really see a lot of stuff. It's just all gray. Anyhow, what is bitterness? Well. Bitterness is two things. It can be an actual uh, sensation in your mouth, a sharp sensation, but it also stands for something that happens inside of us in our emotional state. Bitterness is a sharp, sharp uh, taste in our mouth. If you ever, well, you know what bitters are when in, in bartending, you know, they, they scrape and, well, cooking too. Uh, they, they scrape the, the colored uh, part of the rind of a lemon or a lime, and that's called a bitter. And you put it in your mouth, and it makes your, makes your whole face screw up. And you're, like that. Well, that's bitterness in your mouth. But bitterness in your heart is even worse. When, when when something happens to you and you hold a resentment and it just makes your makes your whole spirit go that that that's something we we can't let it stay in us we got to get rid of it we got to put it away and wrath wrath is a kind of a rage it's it's more than anger actually anger it's not as bad as wrath, but anger leads to wrath. Bitterness leads to anger, and anger leads to wrath, and wrath leads to clamor and evil speaking. And what is clamor? Hey, uh, we saw some clamor in January, and uh, I'm speaking in in the in the year 2021. Just think about what happened in January. It sickened me to watch that on on the news that should not be happening in our country with our constitution no that was not the way to do things and that was a result of wrath and anger and bitterness and we had that happen so we got to put that stuff away from us we got to do things the right way not the wrong way that was the wrong way and we got to put away evil speaking that's that's a lot of things. Evil speaking takes a lot of things into account. Lying, talking bad about other people, uh, oh, all kinds of cussing them out, uh, confronting them, and 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 saying I'm going to slap slap you, I want to punch you, and then you go ahead and start slapping and punching. It all leads to to grieving God. If you claim to be a Christian and you're doing these things, you are making God very, very sad. He don't like it. So, put that stuff away, and put away all malice. And and uh, oh, I, you know, I listen to a McGee every morning uh, on on his uh, website, and. Uh, that's what malice, he says, malice is congealed anger. <laughs> so let's, uh, you know what, let's not let that anger congeal in us. Let's get it away from us, get it out of us, and start being kind one to another, tender-hearted, 
forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. You know what? We shouldn't be forgiving one another just because we want to be forgiven, but we should be forgiving one another because we have love in our heart. And remember, Jesus wants us to love one another even as he loved us and he loves us right now so we got to remember that god is love and he wants us to love he wants us to love take a look at first uh, corinthians chapter 13 read it and remember if you're reading it in the king james version charity is just the elizabethan word for love okay it means love Okay, so I know it's hard to want to love everybody. I know because I, I get bitter, I get angry, but, and in the past I have done some clamorous things, but I don't want to be like that anymore. I want to be kind, I want to be tender hearted, I want to forgive, I want to love. Okay, well. That's as far as I'm going to go for with this one. <laughs> Thank you, and thanks for watching. God bless you.